Look at that big, fat, nasty guy right there. Hey y'all, I'm Donna here at Hazel Bell Farm, and this is my cat. <laughs> she, I just came out to the garden and she saw me come out. So she needs some attention. She likes to sit up on my shoulder for a few minutes. Every day, so I should have seen that coming. Uh, this is my garden. I am, we're kind of in survival mode right now as far as the garden goes. I'm gonna show you a, a quick prune. So I have two rows of tomatoes here. They're on either side. Um, and then I have some other tomatoes kind of sprinkled sporadically throughout the garden that way. I'm probably not gonna mess with those too much today. Um, but these tomatoes here, we'll do a quick walk through so you can see what we're looking at. This is, this is what I'm talking about. You can see some disease. Got a few little tomatoes setting. They're still flowering. We've had days in the 90s here lately. Um, you can also see we have some leaf curling. That is a sign of stress that could be caused by the high heat we've had. It can be caused by disease. It can be caused by all kinds of things. Um, I see some suckers that need to be pruned off. I see some trellising that needs to happen. So we'll just kind of go plant by plant and as I see what needs to be done, I'll share that. Um, this side, like, so you can, here's a good example of some blight that needs to be clipped off and cleaned up. So, I've got my handy dandy little bucket here, and um, I'm really just going to need to use, I've got a good pair of clippers, these are Dollar Tree clippers, I've got a bottle of alcohol in there. Um, we're going to need to clean the, the, whatever you're using to prune the clippers, um, the snippers, between the diseased plants so that you're not spreading that disease from plant to plant. Okay. All right, I'm gonna start with the uh, leaves that are closest to the dirt. I'll go ahead and trim these off. Got this extra little guy. We wanna make sure there's a uh, really great airflow coming through the plant. Now, here's a sucker. Oh. Here's a sucker that comes up between between this line. I'm gonna cut it, but I'm also gonna cut this because you can see the disease here. Here, I had clipped this tomato to this bottom rung. I, I'm just going to move it up, I think. Let's see if that works. Uh, I don't know if that's going to work actually. I'm going to add a clip. I have some more clips. So I've added one of these clips up high to give the plants some more stability on the trellis. The other thing I do is as I see flowers when I come by, I just give them a little tap to help them pollinate. So anything that shows any disease at all, like this guy, I'm going to go ahead and take it off. sure that you are able to leave enough leaves though that the plant can still photosynthesize. You can also take half the stem so I don't have to cut this whole stem off. You can just cut half of it off. Also see some leaf minor damage here. That is a creature that's down here inside the leaf. I'll go ahead and snip it off. So before I move on, I have my snippers that are dirty. And here are my alcohol. And a rag. I'm just gonna give these a quick wipe down. So that I don't spread disease to the next plant. Now I'm starting a little pile of the leaves that I've pruned off. Now since we're dealing with some disease here, 
I want to make sure that I remove them from the garden, from the property altogether. Um, I'll probably feed them to the cows. Um, not too much. Some say you can't feed them to cows or, or pigs or anything that because they are nightshade. It's not strong enough of a nightshade that it's going to make them sick. I have a couple of cows with stomachs of iron, <laughs> and they love them. Um, but because we have disease here, we, we want to make sure that we remove them. You can burn them, you can trash them, um, do whatever you need to do, but uh, make you a little pile and get rid of them. So I normally like to prune my tomatoes down to one or two liters, that's main stems to come up. Um, this guy must have gotten away from me when it was still small, or when I planted it. And it's almost like it is, has grown, like it's almost like two separate plants. It's not, it's all one plant. Um, now, I could take a lot of this side off, but I really don't want to because it looks really great and healthy and I see good flowers over here. I'm gonna go ahead and, and tickle those a little bit. Um, if I try to, I try to attach this to the trellis, it's gonna kinda crowd that way. Let's see. I think my point here today is that each plant is different. Its needs are different. They grow differently. Yeah, that'll work. I'm gonna go ahead and take off these lower leaves here. Now, I don't see any sickness on this plant, so that's a good thing. Take this one off because it's so long. Hitting the ground. I want good airflow again. Okay, so you can see I have two main stalks here. Ideally, I would have trimmed everything else from the bottom and let those two grow up, but I didn't. I left this guy growing out. I've got, so I've got a decision to make here. Cut this off. I don't think I want to. I think I'm gonna cut Know what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pin this one up and let this one go for now. I also see at the bottom at the base of this plant down here, it's trying to go in a little stock. I'm gonna cut that off. Okay, now I found a problem on this plant. So I quickly noticed the tops of these look like they've been bitten off. We've got several leaves missing, looks quite naked. You can see on the ground these little green chunky things. That is, let's see if I can get that in the shot. That is caterpillar poop. So I'm looking, 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 looking for a hornworm, looking for caterpillars. And what do I see? Look at that big, fat, nasty guy this right there. This is a tomato hornworm, also known as a tobacco worm. They look real gross uh, because they're fat. They've got that little horn on the back side of them, and they will take out a nightshade plant almost overnight. So we're gonna pick this guy off and feed him to the chickens. I actually refuse to touch them without a gloved hand. <laughs> There's not a lot I won't touch. I won't touch these guys without a gloved hand. Um, but I do have my, um, I have a shovel here and I've got my little rag I'm using with alcohol on it. So I'm gonna pick them off. All right, here we go. They kind of suck on, so like they're squishy and, oh, he's, he's vomiting for me, that's nice. All right, so this is the horn one. Yeah, 
You won't go to waste, though. But the chickens will love you. Hey, babies. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, little worm. There you go. Uh huh. Good stuff. <laughs> Got it. They don't know she has it. Oh, might be a little chicken bite. Okay, I had to get to my regular chores and I'm trying to finish up these tomatoes before the sun comes out anymore. Um, so the question of tomato suckers comes up a lot and uh, there are different schools of thoughts of how to deal with suckers. Some people say you have to remove them because they are sucking the energy out of your plant. Um, and that's why they call them suckers. But those are actually just fruiting vines and there's different things you can do. You can choose to leave them. There's no problem with that. Um, if you're growing a determinate variety of tomato, you definitely want to leave those. You don't want to prune too heavily um, because a determinate is going to plant is going to grow to a certain height, a certain um, a certain amount of time, and then it's going to set all of its fruit at once. If you remove those fruiting vines, you're going to end up with a lot less fruit. And then you can get into um, <clears throat> some people want more fruit, but you're going to get smaller fruit that way, just like you grow in fruit trees. And some people want less but bigger fruit. So if you're growing, if you were growing like um, trying to grow the biggest tomato you could grow, for example, like for a contest or something, you would definitely want to prune back as much as you could of the other fruiting vines and uh, so that that plant could put all of its energy into a couple of tomatoes. So um, I'll show you a few suckers here and um, I'm not going to do anything with them at this time. We're getting to be um, entirely too hot to try to set any new tomatoes. Um, I will normally pick off some suckers off of a volunteer in the fall and plant those. And last year, most of my tomatoes came from a winter crop of tomatoes here in Florida. We can do that. So here we go. All right, now this plant, um, I can also see some leaf curling here. This plant looks to be a bit thirsty, I think. The heat got it. We've been in the uh, mid to upper 90s for several days in a row. Uh, and you can see like these flowers have dried up. Those will not set fruit. That is because of the heat. Um, so this little vine in particular comes up in the Y between two main branches. That's going to be a sucker. So I'm going to trim that off. Um, well, it has a tomato though, so no, I'm not going to trim that off. Let's see. Okay. Here is a brand new little baby sucker. So you can see I've got two main branches and then this little guy in the middle. That's a little baby sucker. This is the best time to get them. You can just pinch them off. <clears throat> now, one that I would leave is this, this whole branch is actually, I guess, technically a sucker. So you can see the main branch. I had another branch coming off here. I had pruned it back previously. So this would have been the sucker and I left it and I've got flowers so it should fruit. Take all those flowers and add a little water to them. We're supposed to get some rain today. I'm a little bit too excited about that. The rain keeps missing us. All right, I'm gonna keep moving along. start working from the inside out. I don't want any leaves to touch one another, if I can help it, or any branches to touch one another. So that's kind of how I decide what stays and what goes. Well, plenty of good airflow. here to train. You can train these pretty easily if you keep on top of it by just weaving them in and out if you're using something like cattle panel like this. Okay, I still don't like how bunched up this is. I'm actually going to take all this off. Alright, so I think that's it. That's 
all I'm going to do here. So this little leaf looks bad. The whole stem doesn't look bad. I'm also going to spray my blight recipe. Um, I probably won't get to it until tomorrow evening. I always do that in the evening. Since we have graduation tonight, probably not going to happen. So here's the after on that same tomato row. I have a few piles of branches to pick up, but you can see the bottom of the plant is clear. The ground is clear. This side, uh, this side has struggled a little more. And then this end of this side in particular gets a lot of shade. And so the condensation or the dew doesn't dry up quickly on it. And I think it's a little more prone to bite. If this is a continued problem, I'll pull them all out. Um, this one is doing great in the midst of a few small ones. I'm not sure why. I don't know if maybe some extra fertilizer got dumped there. I don't know. Anyway, so that's it. So that's it. I hope this helped you. I hope I was able to answer any questions about uh, pruning tomatoes that you might have. Um, it's kind of late for us to have this size plants. They should be a little bit bigger. However, I did have a memory pop up on my phone this morning that two years ago, which was my best tomato crop ever, um, I had plants that were even smaller than this, so that brings me a little bit of hope. Um, if nothing else, I hope that this video was able to teach you that, um, you know, they say the best medicine for the garden is the gardener, that you've got to get in your garden. You've got, that's why I like hand watering uh, the best I can instead of overhead watering. Besides, it's better for these tomato plants to help prevent disease and blight. Uh, I was able to see that, oh, there's a hornworm. Had I not been in here pruning, by hand right now. Um, one, disease may have gotten away from me and taken out more of the plants. Um, but two, if I came out tomorrow, that giant worm would have eaten that small tomato plant and I would be down a plant. Um, I know I don't have time to get out here tomorrow, so it was important that I got out here today. So I hope that uh, you're able to take that away, if nothing else. And to also just plant, just plant you guys. Um, I'm not gonna get discouraged that these plants are smaller than I would like them to be for this time of year that we're already in the 90s and I don't have fruit uh, or I don't have much fruit, I guess. Um, just, just keep going, keep trying, try again and again and again until you figure it out. So I, that's all I have time for today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you'll like and subscribe, comment and share, do all the things. We love you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. I've got green fingers now. That happens from tomatoes, but um, a little white vinegar will take it right off.